Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Strick, and I'm chair of the program in science, technology, and society, and professor of environmental studies here at FNM. I'd like to introduce our ASL interpreter today, Sharon Nakari. Thank you, Sharon, for interpreting for us at Common Hour. Please note that if you need to change your screen view to include Sharon as you watch, you can adjust the screen display mode in the small box labeled view toward the upper right of the Zoom window. You can also enable the CC, the closed captioning at the bottom if you like. A very warm welcome to all to our sixth Common Hour of the semester. Common Hour is a unique and inclusive program that brings together Franklin and Marshall community weekly during the academic year for culturally and intellectually enriching events. It's the only regularly scheduled event that unites students, faculty, and staff, and invites the larger community to join us. Throughout the pandemic, Common Hour has continued to provide a virtual gathering space and a source of inspiration, education, and compelling discussion for the FNM community and beyond. We hope you'll join us also next week on March 31st for Professor Sarah Jaquette, who will be speaking about strategies to deal with climate change anxiety. Please follow the Common Hour on our webpage and on the Presence Events calendar. During today's event, Zoom viewers can submit questions for our speakers via the Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. Please indicate your affiliation with the college, but we don't need your name. And now I'd like to introduce Anne Statura, Coordinator of Community-Based Learning and Community Outreach in the FNM Spanish Department and co-proposer of today's event, who will introduce our speaker. Anne? Thank you, Jim. I'm delighted to be here today with Tato Enriquez. Tato is an accomplished singer-songwriter. In 2009, he won a Latin Grammy for his song Si Sacamos Cuentas in the Norteño music category. He has written numerous Billboard hits, and we are so grateful to have him with us today. Thanks to our partners and friends at WLCH Radio Centro, that's 91.3 FM in Lancaster, and to the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts. We are especially lucky to have him here today during Common Hour. We are broadcasting from the Lightboard Studio, so I would like to thank the Common Hour Committee and Teb Locke and Kelly Miller for their help with all of the tech behind this event. And Tato is here today because he will be giving a concert this evening in Barshinger Auditorium at 7.30 p.m. It's completely free. Everyone is welcome to attend. We ask that you please wear a mask. Today, Tato is going to be telling us about his career in the music industry. He will be answering any questions that you have, so please put those in the Q&A, and um, talking about the music industry, and uh, tips for anyone who's interested in writing songs. So, Tato. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, and <laughs> thank you to everybody. Uh, thank you to the college, to the radio station, to everybody um, who was, I'm really glad, and honored to be here um, and obviously for the people that is uh, starting to connect to the Zoom I'm really uh, excited to to share with you my experience as a songwriter um, well my career I start uh, my career in music and professionally in 1989 so it's more than 30 years uh, doing this and you know evolving and developing uh, the skills that um, I detected I had <laughs> to write music, to sing, and to perform, and, to, and then to produce. So it's been like a journey, uh, a very beautiful journey in the in my life as a as a musician, as a creative person, and um, as a writer, as a producer. So I've been in, in many, many uh, places, many, many studios, uh, recording studios, uh, radio stations. So there's a lot of things to share with you, uh, mainly with the uh, young guys or girls 
who like to write and sing their own music. Now I think it's a, a very, very nice time to to expose uh, your music because there's a lot of uh, uh, platforms, um, digital platforms, where you can, um, you know, um, um, publish your music over there. Um, one of the things that uh, someone told me here before we start is to talk about uh, the rights, the of the um, uh, the copyrights that you have when when you have your own um, when you have your own uh, music in this case your own songs your albums you can go directly to the to the Library of Congress here in the United States. Um, back in those days, we used to send by mail. Um, I guess right now there have obviously something uh, on the internet that you can fill the forms. But um, I'm not sure if you have to physically uh, still send the um, your music, or you have you can do it by 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 an email. Probably I don't know. Uh, we have to check it out. But uh, that is the the way to to protect. Uh, your music, uh, and obviously to to have the rights, uh, uh, because you don't know. Um, I always compare to write music. It's like um, it's when you do something like that. Uh, you always uh, it's like when you throw like an arrow. You don't know where it's gonna where it's gonna hit or where it's gonna where it's gonna uh, fall. So it's uh, it, it 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 happens and it happened to me many times that I write songs, and then some artists um, get interested in that and became a hit. So, um, but ob obviously it's not for for uh, you don't you don't have to take it for granted this uh, activity. You have to work a lot. You have to um, get a discipline. And um, because it's an art, and, and every song for me is a piece of art. So you have to dedicate a lot of time to uh, to polish, uh, polish the the, um, the songs and the, obviously the lyrics. And you have to uh, search for how to write correctly. And um, that's what uh, we start this program uh, with two workshops uh, before this Zoom. And we, I was trying to, to, to tell everybody how to, you know, how to do, uh, how to do a, a, a song, how to, do, how to write a song from, uh, basically from scratch, from nothing, from a blank uh, piece of paper and a uh, pen in a hand, so it's, uh, and how to deal with your own ideas and how to get the right uh, sentences, the right words, and how to count, obviously, the sentences so you can get some rhythm in the text. Um, and this is the, I mean, this is the, the uh, working part that we have to we have to be conscious that um, I repeat that it's a piece of art, so we have to work a lot. Inspiration is very nice. It's really good. Obviously, it's a creative as thing. It's uh, I think it's like a gift. Um, I obviously believe in the in heavens uh, uh, and the Lord and God and all this stuff, but uh, he. It's it's just uh, like a, a small touch, it's like a small splash of that, and then the other part is to work and work to get a, a very very good song, so it can be competitive in the market, in the industry, and and you know the record labels and artists get interested in your in your work. So. Um, 
after I started to uh, learning piano and and music, uh, I I began to to write songs, but in the in I mean in the in the begin at the beginning I was really really um, only conducted by my soul. After that I I learned how to to work on the music. Uh, I learned to you know with the with a company of good good um, songwriters and get involved in the industry in Mexico City mainly, um, which is a very very uh, competitive market for that. I originally uh, born in El Salvador, Central America, and I moved to Mexico um, in the beginning of the nineties, and uh, that's where I developed my my career. Um, as a performer also, because um, I get, um, I start to to feel the the necessity to express and expose more and more to have a place in the in the you know in the taste of the people who likes the songwriters. Uh, uh, music or it's it's like a genre uh, and that's why I I start to get you know some workshops not only for writing also for performing and then uh, for producing there's three big uh, big areas where I uh, have been um, working all these years and um, there was a lot of experiences um, mainly because I was uh, only did music for me for singing uh, who, who, uh, who sang by me, but when the, a publisher uh, asked me to write a song for for a specific uh, artist uh, from Mexican music, he's called Pedro Fernandez. He's a very well known artist in Mexico. And he was a uh, top sellers of the of that uh, record label. I was getting shocked because I didn't know how to start a song for him, because I didn't know uh, exactly even the Mexican music on that time. But I took the challenge and, and um, start and try to do like the experiment. And I finished the song and and I showed to the to the A and R of the of the record label, and he liked it, and he sent it to Pedro, and Pedro said, "Yes, it's a good song. I'm gonna record it." So it was like a good uh, signal in in the life for me because um, it opens another another big door for me, and then I started to do it um, regularly. Almost every day I was uh, trying to get at least one good idea or or at, or if I could uh, a, a good song uh, finished uh, that's the <laughs> that's the the way I started and um, and then um, um, and then came a lot of things on the on the way, I I record. I, I signed. I signed as an artist also with a major with that major label. But I was freezed in the in the desk of the of the you know the CEO of the of that label. Um, why it's it's hard to say it, but um, they don't want to. They sign not only me another singer songwriters but they don't want to uh, they want to catch us and um, because they have some other artists that they want to um, put all the you know the all the promotions on, on their careers and they don't want other labels uh, sign people like those artists and I was one of them and um, but it was the the way that it it happened on that time. 
So that's why I'm, I, I told you in the beginning that uh, this is a good moment because we don't need uh, any director of any uh, record label to, to have a, a good project on, on the market. Uh, we, we are now independent and we can be the owner uh, of our music, of our ideas. We don't have to share to anyone else. So um, it's a, it's a, it's a very it's a very good a very good time interesting time it's hard obviously it's not easy but uh, I think it's better now than on back of those days that if you're not in a record label you were like mainly nothing or I don't know so um, there was a, as a performer I had uh, also good good experiences uh, I've been um, opening shows in in the late 90s yeah with many many big artists in the Latin music industry and then I start to do my own shows so it's also um, it's a career you have to you have to prepare um, uh, your your uh, voice, all uh, your vocals, um, your skills as a uh, as a as a you know as a musician. If you play guitar, piano, or whatever, you have to work on that, and you have to study a lot music. And then there's uh, many many hours of practicing. So to get you know the level to perform and to impact because this is the the most important part as an artist is to impact the people to uh, like uh, leave a seed in their hearts uh, to share your emotions when you write a song and when you produce and then when you uh, show them in a in a concert so they can feel people go to the to the shows uh, go to the concerts to to get that uh, excitement to feel that emotions uh, that's why they go and buy tickets to go and see their artists because they they share that emotion and they want to be part of that in a live concert it's a, it's a it's a lot of energy so mainly we are um, we are um, I, I I I really believe that we're just uh, something where the energy goes through like a, you know how to say like a channel or yeah it would be like a channel and and you have to and you just spread that. Um, that energy and and in my case I like to I like to do music who, what is with positive obviously uh, messages um, trying to be grateful with life and um, obviously with uh, with the love uh, some some of my songs are very romantic I know <laughs> But uh, it's part of the of the life of the human life, uh, and that's why I think uh, a lot of people start to get uh, identified with my lyrics and my music. Um, and well, the uh, the other part as a producer, it's when you go into a studio and you try to design an album uh, just for you, or if you want to help to someone else and start a career as a producer it's uh it's very important to first to have the like um skills of leader because you have to deal with the egos of the musicians with the egos of the um, uh, sound engineering and, and with your own ego that is the worst <laughs> <laughs> because uh um a record or uh, or a project or a musical project, it's a 
it's it's a work done by a team. It's uh, very uh, it's impossible to do by one own, but only one person. Or so you have to deal with the with the people who is involved, and you have to agree um, and get uh, a lot of points to and get a coincidence of that and work for a, a common you know a common um, um, uh, a common how do you say finish final ending ending yeah that's it <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh common ending in in it have to be it has to be uh, something that touches uh finally the souls of the people that hear and listen it's very um it's very funny and and it's curious because music uh, has has the power to 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 transform lives i'm sure for that uh, mine was transformed for for many many artists uh, uh, obviously from the beatles uh, to now and a lot of latin uh, musicians and um, and i also do a lot of uh, uh, research of music from all over the world i i, I like to listen and and this is a good um, something and a good tip to I can give to the ones who, who wants to write songs is to listen a lot, a lot of music, because uh, in the when you start to write songs, you probably start copy some parts, and it's not it's not bad to do that. Oh, I mean, you don't have to be a copycat, obviously, but uh, you start to get the influence of some other minds, some other souls some other musicians and it's good because from then you start to develop your own your own sound and that's the that's the better part but i know it's not uh, that that's not coming on the first week or the first month probably after a year you start you doing and doing you start uh, to get your own sound and you know like it's like a signature so it's very very nice and uh, well in the in the part of the producing uh, i told you that you have to deal because it's a it's a it's a team uh, it's a work of a team so uh, we need to we need to be very uh you know kind and uh, but you have to have the spirit of a leader because someone has to, it's like a drive a car. Um, if you give the will to everybody, you're probably uh, not going anywhere. So it's a, it's like a it's like a tricky it's like a tricky stuff on that. And you have to always uh, I mean obviously you have to to have a, a lot of um, uh, knowledge of about the gear that you're gonna use, the sound that you are looking for, and um, there's some many, many, many things that you have to 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 be careful on that. Can you give us an example? Yeah, of course. Oh, you want me to sing? Yeah. Of course. This uh, this song I wrote it for. It's the one that I wrote for Pedro Fernandez, and it's like um. It's like a Mexican music, a ballad, but it's uh, on the ranchero bolero style. Eres como el cielo que al amanecer esconde a la luna dentro de su piel. Eres mi equilibrio, mi razón de ser Alguien a quien nunca quisiera perder Tú, la mujer que llenó mi vida Con su lluvia de melodías Con su forma de querer tú 
quien comparte mis alegrías, mis fracasos y fantasías, quien me quiere como soy, quien me acepta como soy. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, eres esa brisa con sabor a miel Abrazando al campo de mi atardecer Eres mucho más de lo que yo soñé Alguien a quien nunca quisiera perder Tú, la mujer que llenó mi vida Con su lluvia de melodías Con su forma de querer Tú, quien comparte mis alegrías Mis fracasos mis fantasías, quien me quiere como soy, quien me acepta como soy. Ah, 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 ah. Quien me quiere como soy. <laughs> Thank you, gracias. Thank you. Well, that song was uh, recorded by Pedro Fernandez, and uh, he was a uh, he was one of the top sellers of that record label and that in those days. And that song obviously opens uh, uh, huge doors for my work. So I start to get uh, be asking for right songs for more and more artists and um, in the Latino in industry, obviously. Um, after that, I, but in always at, 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 at the same time, I was, uh, I was working on my own projects. Um, after that first record label sign, mm. that was not too good. Uh, in the start of my career as an independent artist, this song is from, is from my first album as a, as, as a solo artist. The um, album was called Perro que ladra no muerde. It's like a dog that, that barks doesn't bite, something like that. <laughs> and I, I did, I, I wrote, um, I like to write uh, many, many um, kind of music uh, styles. This is, um, this was from, uh, I get inspired in a movie from Pedro Almodóvar from España, and he's an Oscar winner also. This song is called Ojos, and it's gonna be part of the, of the concert tonight, so please don't miss it, go. <laughs> We we'll wait for you. This is like this. Ojos inquietantes, como un rayo láser. Entras por mi mente En tu cuarta fase Tienes todo el arte De amar con los labios Quiero que me ates Te presto mis manos Robaré del cielo Todos tus venenos, no digas que no, porque 
Yo estoy colgándome de tus besos, princesa de los excesos y bebiéndome tu sudor. Y es que yo estoy colgándome de tu cuerpo, extraña diosa del sexo, amárrame en tu prisión yeah. ojos inquietantes como un rayo láser entras en mi mente en tu cuarta fase Ojos inquietantes de en Almodóvar Me deja sin lentes En medio de sombras Robaré del cielo Todos tus venenos No digas que no porque yo estoy colgándome de tus besos, princesa de los excesos, y bebiéndome tu sudor. Y es que yo estoy colgándome de tu cuerpo, extraña diosa del sexo, Amárrame en tu prisión. Colgándome de tu cuerpo. Extraña diosa del sexo, amárrame en tu prisión. <laughs> Some kind of uh, swing and jazzy influences, and uh, and obviously uh, 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 some chords that I took from from uh, I don't know from artists like Sting. I, I admire his work, obviously, and. Um, I can feel the influence of him on some parts of the song of, and some other Argentinian uh, musicians like Espineta and Fito Paez uh, that are really well known in the Latin music industry. I don't know how we go with, uh, with the time. Do, do we have some questions from the people or we'll go straight ahead with some more music or I don't know. What do you think? More music. Huh? More music. Más More music. Más oh. música, por favor. Bueno. Otra, otra, otra. If you start liking my music, come to the concert, please. <laughs> It's going to be nice. Okay, this song is called... I'm going to sing two more songs, okay? We have 10 minutes. Great. This is the one uh, from Grupo La Costumbre. Uh, I wrote this song and they won the Grammy. And it's called Si Sacamos Cuentas. Yeah. 
entregué mi vida mis mejores años tú me diste a cambio un amor barato ya no me sorprende de ti un desengaño porque eres tan falsa no creo en tu llanto si sacamos cuentas me sales del viento ¿Cómo hace pagarme tanto sufrimiento? Por eso te quedas abrazada al frío De una lista enorme de amores perdidos Si sacamos cuentas me sales debiendo Yo te di de todo y sin remordimiento Y ahora resulta que no te importaba Porque tu desprecio es con lo que me paga. Te entregué mi vida, me causaste daño, con tus propias manos me hiciste pedazos. Si sacamos cuentas me sales debiendo, yo te di de todo y sin remordimiento, y ahora resulta que no te importaba. Porque tu desprecio es con lo que me pagas Si sacamos cuentas me sales debiendo ¿Cómo hace pagarme tanto sufrimiento? Por eso te quedas abrazada al frío De una lista enorme de amores Si sacamos cuentas me sales debiendo ¿Cómo hace pagarme tanto sufrimiento? Por eso te quedas abrazada al frío De una lista enorme de amores perdidos Okay, bueno, y para creo que ya vamos terminando. We're yeah. gonna finish. Mm -hmm. Last song. Okay. No problem. <laughs> Everybody's okay. Are you okay? I'm okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody. Thank you. Thank you again for for all the people. There are some questions, mm -hmm. or no? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, I can read it. Okay. There we go. Jim, do you wish to do one more song before we start questions and answers? Oh, okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Very good. Here we go. Uh, this song is called uh, La Vida es una Fiesta. Uh, it's like uh, life it's a party or life it's a fest. And I wrote this song because um, I do believe that we have to celebrate. We have to celebrate uh, our uh, past in this uh, earth, in this planet. And it's all about to be happy. Um, we have to be happy. We deserve to be happy in any circumstances. Even in these times, uh, we have more, um, you know, more duty to be happy because it's the only thing that can uh, make our soul and our spirit um, um, to achieve the goal in life. That it's mainly that. Be happy and celebrate. Here we go. Te 
debajo del sol el mundo es de color somos como una acuarela hay un transistor en cada corazón tenemos la señal perfecta déjala salir déjala fluir no hagas más interferencia que no hay distinción entre vos y yo juntos somos el planeta siente que todo se transforma si te sueltas siente que hay una sola raza en esta tierra la vida es una fiesta ¿qué esperas? entra no te quedes allá afuera la vida es una fiesta ¿qué esperas? para contagiar al que no crea la vida es una fiesta ¿qué esperas? para sonreírte con cualquiera debajo del sol suena mi canción y hay una fábrica de ideas cada corazón es un transmisor del amor a su manera. Siente que todo se transforma si lo sueltas. Tú sientes que hay una sola raza en esta tierra. La vida es una fiesta. ¿Qué esperas? Para contagiar al que no crea, la vida es una fiesta. ¿Qué esperas? Para sonreírte con cualquiera, la vida es una fiesta. ¿Qué esperas? Para sonreírte, para sonreírte, para sonreírte con cualquiera. the musical common hours <laughs> they're just such a a wonderful respite from being up in our head all the time <clears throat> or staring at a printed page or let alone a screen so we've got a number of questions for you from the audience um the uh, the first i think is from a student i was just wondering if you believe everyone has the ability to sing or are some people just gifted with a great voice like yourself? Oh, thank you for that uh, compliment. Yeah, <laughs> I believe I do believe if we if you speak, you can sing. It's uh, I mean, uh, it's a uh, nature of the I mean, it's in the human nature that we all can sing. The thing is, um, we have to obviously develop that skill. Um, some people get um, you know, uh, have the gift that they sing really, really good uh, and they don't have to do nothing, but it's a, it's a gift. But I, I, I really believe uh, that everybody can, can do and obviously express because the singing is not with the, it's coming from the inside, from the soul. And everybody has, we all have souls. So it's, it's like a, 
it's like a language. Uh, thanks for that. A another student asks, um, what did winning a Grammy mean to you? Oh, uh, obviously uh, more, uh, um, how do you say, compromiso? Commitment. Commitment, yeah. I think it's a, it was a, a great commitment for me because I have to uh, um, ask to myself to do uh, always better, better songs. So when you achieve uh, or when you get recognized for something, from any award in life, uh, it's obviously it's very beautiful. It's like a, it's like um, something that um, you know uh, makes you feel good. But uh, and you have to obviously you have to 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 enjoy it. But from on the other hand, you have to you have to work more. Uh, because uh, from the recognition, uh, um, from that moment, you have to uh, you have to show to the um, you know to yourself and to the industry and to the people that you were uh, that you deserved that. So the more you work, it's uh, the more you can uh, go and get better, better things. I hope that doesn't feel like too much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, it is, but under pressure, probably you can have, uh, you can get uh, good, good, good things, good results. I, I, I believe that. You're talking to students who take exams all the time, so <laughs> they, they must have some degree of understanding of what you're trying to say. Yeah. Um, a freshman student asks, um, I just wanted to ask you about making connections within the music industry. What's a good way to find people to connect with and possibly even collaborate with on music? Okay, um, now um, we have the social media. Um, most of the uh, people that you want to meet, they have their accounts and they, um, they are over their accounts. Um, I don't want to say that they don't have hiring someone that uh, manage that account, but uh, I've been I have experience when I want to um, contact someone, I write a message. Probably sometimes I don't have the answer, but in the um, in the in the most of the times I receive the 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 answers and and they're very grateful to to get contacted. And when you have a good work to show. Um, they they always gonna be grateful to to listen good music. So don't be shy. Don't don't have fear to go and to the social media and try to contact directly to the to the artists or the promoters. You think it's good to have a recording in hand when you first approach people? Of course, of course. It's uh, and the more uh, and and the better that you have your your recording and the most professional and the most professional way you're going to have um, better better results for sure um so there's a very brief question uh, which amadovar movie inspired ojos oh i, I didn't get that which I the didn't... you said ojos was inspired by an amadovar movie oh ojos okay i got you yeah. which one which movie, which movie? Oh, the movie was called Atame, <laughs> Tight Me. Yeah. Uh, the next question is, um, in your over 30 years in the music business, how do you deal with creative burnout? I deal with? Creative burnout. With creative burnout. Uh, translate for me. No se te acaban las ideas o te pones como, oh, the como brain. muy sí muy fatigada y ya no no no. Oh, no I got tiene, you, I got you. Okay. No, uh, well, you have to you have to always uh, restart your own uh, uh, hard disk in the mind and the soul. <laughs> uh, what I do, what I do, it's uh, I take some, um, you know, it's that like a like a like a vacations, but uh, what I do is. Uh, Try to divide my year in the, um, one part of the year I write, I focus on write, one part of the year I focus on producing, and one part of the year I try to, to focus on, on, on shows. 
So on that way, uh, I have time to, yeah, to obviously to, to get uh, some, uh, some uh, seasons that I don't have the, the pressures to write every, every day. But when I was under the contract to, to write music during, for example, for one year, full year, yeah, there was a, a lot of, uh, obviously, the pressure in the mind was really hard, but it also uh, helps because you, you get, you, you, how do you say that? Te sientes obligado a hacerlo, or you, or te ves obligado a hacerlo. Nothing yeah, focuses you feel, the you mind feel, like a deadline. Yeah, you, feel, you feel obligated to do it, and you have to, to you have to entregar, de deliver, you have to deliver the, you know, like 10, 14, 15 songs. So, it's, uh, that's the way I, I did it. Wow. That's pressure. Yeah, it is. It is. But it helps. Um, if you feel, if, if you can manage your mind, uh, and and try not to feel the pressure and do the work, it's going to work. It's going to work for sure. Musicians must be Zen practicers, whether they want to or not. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I think the music demands a lot of uh, the technique and you have to, you have to spend a lot of time. Uh, obviously, the musicians uh, uh, always uh, have a like a, 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 a room with a soundproof to not bother anyone in the house <laughs> or in the building, it depends. <laughs> yeah, but uh, sometimes uh, that work, uh, we do it in, by night because it's where, I don't know why, the, we feel connected probably with the moon or something like that, that we'd get uh, more inspired to play it. Yeah, like Bohemian. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. La vie bohème. Yeah. Um, so a, a student asks, what did you think of the music in uh, Disney's film Encanto, uh, particularly um, Dos Uruguitas? What? Encanto. Encanto, la película. El canto. Encanto. Oh, Encanto. Okay. Uh, you know, um, um, uh, I gotta be honest. I haven't seen that movie. I gotta do it <laughs> for sure. You and me, you and me both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So and I'm I'll sorry be, not not to have a good answer for that student. I'll be paying attention for that song when I see it. Okay. I w I will for sure. I will. Thank you. Um, so uh, a faculty member asked, "Do you find it easier to write lyrics or to write the music?" Which usually oh. comes to you first? Oh, it's a very good question. Uh, I think I'm, I'm more a uh, musician, uh, naturally. So the music comes a little bit faster, always. But uh, since I start to develop the skills to write down a text before uh, putting some melody, um, I discovered a lot of things, a lot of things, uh, very interesting things. And the songs are, I feel that I write better songs when I start with the lyrics. Um, I don't know why. Probably because um, the text, it, it starts to, to ask for the music by itself. And, and it's really nice because the text is very, very rhythm. Uh, it has a structure. It has, um, it has a time. And that time is, is the basement, always timing, rhythm is the basement of any music, any kind of music. So, um, I, I, well, I, I, I obviously enjoy both, but um, since I start writing lyrics first, I think I do better songs. Um, a comment uh, from one of the professional staff members. Thank you for sharing your talents. Your passion for music is clear and evident. What advice would you give for students of music when they feel they have no support or when they question their talents? Uh, well, I have to, I have to say that because um, I start to to uh, face in in my younger years. Um, obviously, in my country is very difficult to live uh, to make a life or make a living um, 
from music. So I decided to, to leave my country because I want to be a musician. So think, the first thing is uh, I can say to anyone is have to be brave to, to conquer your own dreams because um, we don't know, we probably have more lives. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I only count with this one. And I said to myself, uh, I want to do that for the rest of my life. I want to I wanna do music. If you have and you feel the passion, don't hesitate. Go, go and, and make your dreams come true because nobody's going to do it for you. And you have to do it with or without permission. And you're not uh, transgressing or you're not uh, trespassing to anyone else. Uh, if you don't do it, probably you're going to get older and gonna always going to regret yourself because you didn't have the, uh, you know, you, you, you weren't uh, the enough brave to do that. That's what I, I can tell you. Um, a question says, uh, because I'm a musician from Honduras, Oh, great. I'd like, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to ask if being from Central America, a region with so many humanitarian problems, has had an impact on your experiences as a musician. For sure. For sure. Yeah. It makes you uh, more, I think, and more sensitive uh, and more sensible for what happens in the world, for what happens to people. Uh, we grown up over there with, uh, yeah, with a lot of, uh, um, a lot of problems, uh, not only, um, not only the, I don't know, um, you know, life, it's, it's, it's very cheap over there. Uh, to be, to be alive in those countries, it's, it's, it's just a good, uh, a good thing that happened to, to someone because it's very dangerous. And uh, if you add uh, the social and the economic problems, uh, so there's, it, I know it's hard. But uh, as, a, as a musician, you can uh, have, well, I think more, uh, more emotions to, to write down, to, to work for, and to give to your own country because uh, I'm I'm originally from there, and everything that I have that I that I've been achieved in my life always I share with my people, for sure. Some of the greatest music comes out of periods of intense struggle, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, there's for a sure. couple of questions from students that seem to me like they're somewhat related. You've already said a little bit about the first one. What is your songwriting process like? But maybe you could say more. The other one is, what advice would you have for a younger musician who's trying to learn how to be original in creating and developing their sound? Okay, well, I said previously that we start copy, for sure. We have a lot of influences. Uh, you cannot uh, deny that because uh, uh, we don't invent the music. Uh, the music is a, is a gift. Um, that is uh, for humanity, like any other art or any other activity. But um, to get your own sound, to get your own style, that's the, that's the hard part. And to get uh, or to reach that point, the only way that I can see, or the only formula that I know is to work every day. That's all. Try to write every day, try to make music every day, and the most you do, you're going to have better, better and better uh, material, better and better songs. True of so many things in life, isn't it? Um, a very specific and technical question. One student wants to know, when do you think is the moment to change the chord progression in a song? Oh, okay. Uh, it depends. Do you do that by feel, or do you yeah. do that by music theory, or some combination of the two? Yeah, you know, sometimes I, we, in the pop music, when, when you write songs for the industry or for get, uh, get considered by some, uh, some other artist, 
uh, there's a formula, uh, there's formulas or there's a card progressions that are very, very well known. Uh, one is the fifth, uh, circle of fifth or the fourth. It's, uh, it's about the greats um, in music who, who plays, uh, can understand easily. Uh, and uh, when, when you're doing your own, like uh, original, you have the, the freedom to do whatever you want. But uh, you have to think always that you don't have to please only yourself. That is good. You have to please yourself. But uh, you have to uh, be very conscious that you have to please also the people. And you have to connect with some other people. So if you're very selfish on that, it's going to be hard to, to have a, a, a good song. I mean, a, a good song that has, uh, you know, some echo in some other people. Well, thanks so much. Um, we still have four or five questions pouring in and oh, I, can send, I can send them to you by way of Anne if you like, um, nice. just so you'll see what people are asking. But I'm sorry to say we've run out of time today. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank Tato Anandas again for a really remarkable presentation and performance. Um, music soothes the savage breast. Um, I'd like to thank um, Sharon again for interpreting and uh, Anne for being the proposer and thank the audience again and remind you to join us again next week for Common Hour uh, when our speaker is Professor Sarah Jaquette Ray and the, her topic is strategies for how to deal with climate anxiety. Something that all of us, even musicians, I think, have to deal with. Uh, <laughs> I uh, if I could write songs, perhaps it would be easier for me to deal with climate anxiety. <laughs> <clears throat> Thanks again, everybody. See you next week. Thank you.